Psychotherapy research has shown that the outcome of the psychotherapeutic process is quite dependent on the personalities of both the therapist and the client. Personality theorists tell us that the personality of a person remains constant throughout life. However, the expression of the personality is largely dependent on the presence of the other person. Hence, within the psychotherapy session, how the client and therapist express their personalities is co-created. So toying with this idea, I decided to use this classic 1965 video called Three Approaches to Psychotherapy in which the client, Gloria, visits three different psychotherapists, Carl Rogers, Fritz Perls and Albert Ellis. So let's start with the beginnings. The beginnings of each encounter are really interesting moments. Therapist and client get to meet each other for the first time. Let's take a look at these clips. I'd be glad to know whatever concerns you. Well, I'm right now I'm nervous, but mm -hmm. I feel more comfortable the way you're talking in a low voice, and I don't feel like you'll be so harsh on me. But uh, I, I hear the tremor in your voice. So <laughs> you are in your... Uh, well, the main thing I uh, want to talk to you about is. Uh, I'm just newly divorced. Rogers tells Gloria in a very gentle voice that he'd be glad to listen to what concerns her, to which Gloria reassures him that although she's nervous, she feels comforted by his voice. Rogers notices Gloria's tremor in her voice and lets her continue with her narrative. So compare this beginning with the next one. We are going to have an interview for half an hour. Right away, I'm scared. You see, you're scared, but you're smiling. I don't understand how one can be scared and smile at the same time. Unlike the beginning of the session with Rogers, where Gloria seemed pretty composed, in the session with Pearls, Gloria starts already fidgeting with her handbag and her cigarettes. Pearls speaks one sentence. He says, we're going to have an interview for half an hour. Like in the previous session, when Gloria tells uh, Rogers that she's nervous, she tells Pearls that she's scared. Like Rogers, Pearls picked on Gloria's nuances in body language. However, unlike Rogers, Pearls did not let the incongruency of her body language and her words pass. At this point, Gloria also wasn't given a chance to wander away with a narrative. Well, would you like to tell me what's bothering you most? <sighs> Yeah, I think the things that I'd like to talk to you the most about are adjusting to my single life. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I don't know if I'm doing the wrong thing, but I'm going to refer to your book anyway, because this is what I'm impressed with, the book about the Intelligent Woman's Guide to Men. Well, Alice gets pretty much straight down to business. He says, well, can you tell me what's bothering you most? To which Gloria replies, well, I actually read your book and I'm very impressed by it. So it is evident already from the beginning of this session that the therapy session was very much centered on the therapist himself. So we can see that from the beginning of the session, both therapist and client influences each other, setting already the tone for the session. What you're actually seeing now is Gloria in her sessions with Rogers and Pearls put side to side. The sound has been deleted and the tape is running at three times the speed. In the session with Rogers on the left, Gloria seems more relaxed. She also smiles a lot. She keeps her body, however, relatively still, especially her right arm and her legs. In contrast, in her session with Pearls, Gloria seems to gesticulate a lot more. She moves her arms, legs, bends forwards and backwards, seems a bit more lively and edgy at the same time. So, if we disregard what is being said, we can actually see how the same client expresses different aspects of her personality when she's with different therapists. Now let's speed up the sessions 20 times, once again removing the sound. We noticed earlier that when Glory was with Rogers, she was relatively still. When we look at Rogers' body language, we also realize that he hardly moves. He sits bent forward in his chair, 
as if to be watching Gloria very closely, and gesticulates as he talks with his hands. In contrast, Pearl seems to move around a lot in his chair, bending forward and backward, fiddling with his cigarettes, and gesticulating with his hands. So if I may use the metaphor of a dancer in the therapy sessions, I could say that Rogers looked like he was admiring a dancer on stage, while Pearls was doing a tango with this dancer on the stage. This is somewhat related to the previous clip, Airtime. Who got to speak more in the session? In the session with Rogers, Gloria had a chance to use more narratives. He listened to her very keenly. He also paraphrased what she has said and asked her many questions in order to clarify what she says. In contrast, Gloria's session with Alice saw Alice having more airtime than Gloria. Alice had given Gloria quite a bit of advice and there was more monologue on the side of the therapist in the session. Of the three sessions, Gloria's session with Pearls looks most like a dialogue between therapist and client. It was a somewhat playful and combative interaction and neither therapist nor client gave a monologue during the session. Different observers of these therapy sessions may have different opinions as to what the therapy sessions were about. I have picked a whole 30 second snippet of each session which I think describes the transference relationship between the client and the therapist. Well, I have a hopeless feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all the things I sort of feel myself, and I feel, uh, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. I feel like this is the conflict, and it's just insoluble, and therefore it's hopeless. And here you look to me, and I don't seem to give you any help. And uh, right. Mm -hmm. I am. Uh, I really know you can't answer for me and I have to figure it out myself, but I want you to guide me or show me where to start or... So it won't look so hopeless. Uh, you're acting like you're treating me as if I'm stronger than I am and I want you to protect me more and be nicer to me. Are you aware of your smile? You don't believe a word what you say. <laughs> I do too, but I know you're going to pick on me for it. It's <laughs> your... You're bluff, you're a phony. Do you believe, are you meaning that seriously? Yeah. If you see you're afraid and you laugh and you giggle and you squirm, it's phony. Isn't that a vote of non-confidence in you? An essential yes. vote of non-confidence? Yes. And the non-confidence is because you're saying, one, I don't want to miss out on things. I would like to get the kind of a man I want and be a, uh, in your words, superior kind of girl who gets a superior kind of man. Yes. But if I don't, then I'm practically on the other side of the chain completely a no good mix, somebody who will never get anything that I want, which is quite an extreme away, isn't it? Yeah. And so these are my tongue-in-cheek comparison of the three sessions. These videos are very interesting even though they are more than 50 years old. I hope that you have enjoyed my attempt in trying to explain what is meant when we talk about personality in the psychotherapy session. Please leave me a comment if you do have any and thank you for watching.